Hey Parasites, welcome back to the Venom Vlog, and we are continuing our Osborne family Christmas here with Symbiotes on the channel with Misery, issues four and five. This is the conclusion to the miniseries that is written by Sabir Pizzata, and then also drawn by Francesco Martorino, who does a great job. I think the artwork on this book is really, really awesome, and Sabir does a good job writing it, um, at least the human moments. I really do like all the stuff with Liz. I think Sabir really was tapping into Liz Allen in this, trying to understand her, uh, put himself in her shoes maybe even a little bit, and try to figure out what makes this character tick. How does she motivate herself to get up every morning considering the loss that she's suffered and the grief that she's been through more than once with the same person considering, you know, Harry died once and then again when he was like cloned, you know, and married another woman, Lily Hollister. And that was all very confusing because it's, you know, the different realities and Mephisto and that kind of stuff. But she still went through those losses. And so she struggles, you know, and I thought he did a great job tapping into her as a character in this. Um, and then also bringing in the Alchemex Corporation and, and doing more stuff with Liz and that corporation. I thought all that stuff works in this. But what really doesn't work for me, I feel, is a lot of the symbiote stuff. Like the villain just being like, you know, madness or whatever, you know, kind of a nod to Venom the Madness, I think, with the multiple heads. But you have just like some super soldier guy, you know, who's just maxed out with all the Life Foundation symbiotes, which the Scream one shouldn't even really be there. It should be dead. So continuity big time in that front, um, because now that, that symbiote apparently became silence, you know, and uh, and went back to Andy Benton. So to see Scream here is like, you know, what? Like, I know you, you got to have Scream because the Life Foundation symbiotes, you know, all bonding together. But then it still doesn't make sense, though, to do that. <laughs> so I don't know. I think the, that, like I said, a lot of the symbiote stuff feels really haphazard i guess is the best way to, to put it and i don't have the physical copies of these books so i don't have any digital codes in this episode i'm sorry to say so i'm going to just try to talk through these real quickly and show off some of the interior artwork that i scanned from the digital copies that i bought on uh, on kindle because now comiXology kind of went away and we're just buying stuff on kindle now so i picked these up digitally just so i could wrap up this series because we talked about the first three issues and I missed issues four and five at the comic store, so I wasn't able to get physical ones because I didn't have it on my pull list, to be fair. I, I canceled it after the third issue, and then the store just didn't get enough copies for there to still be one when I got there. So, yeah, that happens sometimes. So I don't mind paying the digital copies and, and checking them out and getting nice high-res scans. So I'll show a few images, but not a ton, because I don't want to give away the whole book, and I don't want to give away everything. But we will talk about some spoilers here, so I will essentially wrap up and and kind of break down a few key moments from the last few issues here uh, and then tell you how I feel about them. So yeah, Sabir and Francisco though, great job on the book overall, but I do have some criticism. So we're going to dive into that. Um, the opening with the flashback in issue four, like I said, I think Sabir really gets a handle on Liz and really understands at least a little bit or dove into the mind of that character more than I've seen a lot of writers do. Liz Allen goes all the way back to like Amazing Fantasy 15, you know, or an Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. Like she's an early, early Spider-Man character. She went all the way back to the beginning, along with Flash Thompson and, you know, and Harry Osborn and everybody. Like she's way back there. So it's cool to see them do anything with her. But to me, her leading Alchemex and being in charge of that was more than enough. I thought that was awesome. I thought that did a lot for the character because she's coming out of the shadows of the Osborne family and kind of making it her own name for herself. And now she's just another character with a symbiote. And I, I'm honestly like, I know we're the Venom vlog, but it is getting so terrible how they're just throwing symbiotes on anyone. I mean, literally this entire family, except Stanley has symbiotes or had one at some point. And it's just frustrating. And it kind of dilutes how cool symbiotes are, I feel, when you just throw them on everyone. If you're doing an event book, you know, or like a Maximum Venom cartoon or something where, all right, you got a Doctor Strange Venom and you got this and you're doing it for merch and stuff. It's like, okay, that's a one-time event thing. I get it. And then you move on. But now it's just like monthly. There's, you know, six or seven books out there now with symbiotes in them. And, and there's not a lot of quality in some of these books, I feel, at least or at least in the concepts of them. And like I said, I think Sabir, if you gave him a book where Liz was just in charge of Alchemix and had to deal with even taking down the Life Foundation symbiotes and recapturing them and using the jury or, you know, someone else or spearhead, you know, her her secret agent, uh, you know, super spy, uh, you know, armored person. I mean, you, there's all these things you could use for Liz at her disposal for her to still be a cool character and not turn her into just like a, another cliche, you know, symbiote character. 
because that's all she really is. Um, and although Sabir does do a good job of having the symbiote kind of feed on her emotions, and that's why she's having some of these flashbacks. So I think Sabir did a great job in that balance of going, okay, if we're going to make Liz feel this way, or if we're going to have her emotionally try to come overcome this obstacle, the symbiote has to play a part of that because symbiotes do you know bond with you and they can uh, relate uh, emotion wise with you and that's what he goes for here so you know kudos there like i like i don't i'm critical of the book but i do not dislike this book i just the concepts of multiple symbiote people right now how they're doing it now black widow has a costume and and we'll get into that because i'll talk about those venom issues that one i really don't like i actually prefer misery over the black widow symbiote so far um but yeah so anyway you have spider-man and spearhead they kind of teamed up at the end of the last issue and they're looking for Liz, right? Um, and because, you know, Norman's like, we need to find her, you know, do whatever you can. Here's all the money in the world, <laughs> you know. So he sends Spider-Man in with some goblin tech and he runs in a spearhead who's been sent by Alchemex to, to find Liz. And uh, and there's also a, a, a team that went with Spearhead that she separated from, right? She ejected herself from the ship and the ship went ahead with all those uh, soldiers to go to find where Liz is because they tracked her to a you know location, um, and then as the ship's going, her you know Spearhead and Spider Man stay behind. They talk it out, and then he says, "All right, look, let's take this Goblin tech, let's take these bombs that Norman Osborn gave us, and let's go find Liz Allen." So they leave together, trailing that ship. So in this issue, you see the ship; it has landed on this island and crashed, and it was killed by a bunch of techno symbiotes, which we saw at the end of the last issue, where Madness kind of shared some of the symbiote, uh, I guess, DNA or whatever, or whatever they are, you know, the, the life forms um, and created other ones that bonded to, to human machine hybrid people and turned them into techno symbiotes, which again, just another kind of dumb idea, I feel just more fodder anyway, there was no real depth or reason for a lot of this, other than just to have some bad guys uh, to beat up that have symbiotes on them, but also laser eyes and, you know, do you know, rail gun arms or whatever. Uh, so yeah, I didn't really care for a lot of that. Um, and that's that's where the book, I think, hurts for me. But all the Liz stuff where she's remembering, you know, Harry and the big breakthrough she has in the final issue where she kind of admits that Harry wasn't consistently abusive physically, but he was kind of emotionally because he was going through a lot. He had the goblin serum in him. He has his father always breathing down his neck. And so he was an unstable partner for her. And then at one point, uh, right before his passing, he did hit Liz and became physically abusive. And although she kind of forgives because she understands on some level, you know, he, it wasn't him. He had the goblin serum in him. And then she also says, yeah, he did do that. It was an awful thing. And I don't forgive him for it also because it was awful and he's an adult and he should have known that's not, that wasn't going to be a good thing to do was hit me. Um, and in front of our kid, no less. So she doesn't want to forgive him on another level, but then she reminds Peter like, yeah, you know, though he did die saving us and died a hero in spectacular spider-man number 200 great issue by the way go find it um so she talks about that and she kind of comes to this moment where she's like okay like she's trapped she's at this facility she gets broken out by this super spy that we were wondering about who you know this super spy was we knew it was a woman but we didn't know who turns out it's lily hollister and she's like look i've been reformed i'm no longer a goblin person either um after harry died you know during the events of nick spencer's run i got help and i've been deprogrammed if you will and i got cleansed of the goblin stuff and, and i've been trained now and i'm here to try to help you and get you out and then she lasts like two pages so they can have a quick conversation and kind of uh, you know forgive each other in a way or like accept a potential friendship between them like as both ex wives to a harry osborne you know liz was married to the real harry osborne and lily was you know married to a, a clone i guess and had stanley which makes me wonder more about stanley and, and what kind of like superhuman he might be or you know or if he has half clone dna then again the osborne's were pretty good at perfecting the cloning uh serum you know or formula along with you know jackal of course and ben, then ben riley when he became jackal so that i guess that procedure has been perfected a little bit more so maybe there's nothing to really worry about with uh, Normie and uh, no potential degeneration. But that would be a neat story to tell 
where they have to save his life, you know, maybe. Um, that would be a heartbreaking story because obviously you don't want to see things like that happen to kids in comics. Um, but Spider-Man doesn't have a history of that, like with the kid who collected Spider-Man. And, uh, and then even in the animated series, they did the little girl, that story where she was dying and Peter Parker took his, or Spider-Man took his mask off and showed her, um, you know, who he was before she passed away. Uh, so there's always been that kind of stuff that, you know, stuff that pulls at your heartstrings um, in the comics of Spider-Man. So that could be a story they could tell later with with Stanley. But uh, getting back to this book and wrapping it up, you know, you have Carlton Drake is here and you find out he's involved, obviously, and he's trying to take Liz out. But she breaks out. She fights Madness. Madness does get the one up on Lily and I thought killed her. But we find out that she's still OK and, and that Liz is helping paying for her recovery um, and, you know, bouncing back from what's happened to her in this issue which i thought killed her i legitimately thought i was like wow they brought her back for like lily hollister for four pages and killed her um but no they, they, she's still alive <laughs> so uh so that kind of wraps up and then liz gets her moment with carlton drake and that wraps up not in the way i expected um but then also a little bit like i expected because i figured the carlton drake stuff will pay off more in the um L al ewing you know venom run so i'm sure that'll pay off over there so they kind of get to an understanding here though so they kind of button that up and liz's relationship with carlton and how they're going to go their separate ways from here and then spidey shows up to save the day and he does take down some techno symbiotes with spearhead but he doesn't ultimately save liz at this point she's already broken out thanks to lily hollister and concluded her interactions with carlton drake so at the end though you have the life foundation symbiotes back under control back at alchemex and alchemex is once again the only company that's allowed to work with symbiotes and I guess that whole thing is still going on where symbiotes are outlawed. Um, so the jury's still, you know, working out there. Spearhead is still out there hunting symbiotes. So I don't know if they'll they'll do anything with that. I feel like they keep mentioning it every once in a while. But then they, that has nothing to do with the main Venom book. It has nothing really to do with the Carnage book um, to a point so far, at least, uh, the new one. Um, so I don't know. I will see if they even touch on that again or if they'll just wait six months mention it again and then forget about it again <laughs> we'll see so overall though this book it was fun i mean you know it's neat to see stuff done with liz allen i mean that's how i always feel like i remember when they killed aunt may in the comic books and they brought her back and i'm like okay if you're gonna bring aunt may back and you're gonna do the mephisto story and undo the marriage and all that you really better do something with aunt may because she can't just be the old lady hanging out in the house crying and wondering if Peter Parker's okay and then getting mad when he doesn't show up and or get mad at him when he doesn't go to school anymore. You know, it's like they got to do more than that because that's how it, a lot of these characters were written for a while. Mary Jane was just she had a job, but then most of the time you just saw her in her underwear, you know, back at Peter's house and she was just crying, hoping Peter would come home safe. And that was the extent of her character. And you're just like, well, that's not much of a character. And I got to say, since the Mephisto story, even though I hate that story, they did do a lot with Aunt May, with Feast and bringing in Mr. Negative and having her a connection there. Then she got remarried at one point to J. John Jameson's father, <laughs> which was funny. I mean, it's kind of neat that they did that, but they're doing stuff with these characters. And Mary Jane, they've done more stuff with her character. Like, you know, now she's hanging out with Black Cat sometimes and and uh, you get some stories with her. And she's had her own solo book for a little while, like a mini series, and uh, has powers at one point. And even though I don't like what they're doing with her right now, at least they're doing something with her. And sometimes that's, you know, more than we get. So, uh, so yeah. And I know some people will be like, oh, but I don't like what they're doing with her. And, and it's, they're forcing it and they're forced, you know, whatever. And it's like, yeah, but Mary Jane and female characters in general have been a part of Spider-Man books all the way since the beginning. Like I said, Liz Allen. So like Liz Allen and like Mary Jane and these other characters, it's nice to see stories done with them. I wish I liked all the stories done with them. But here I got to say, at least for Sabir, he, I think he knows how to write Liz. I think he tapped in to that character and found what makes her tick and fleshed it out in these final two issues. And even though I didn't like any of the symbiote stuff, for the most part in this, uh, the artwork by Francesco was really nice. So it, it had enough of a balance to where I'm like, okay, these are worth the price of admission. And I would you know, recommend all of you guys go pick this up when it comes out in trade, one through five all together. Or if you're you know already got the first three issues, if you go track down four and five or buy them digitally, however you buy your comics, Check them out yourself and let me know what you think down in the comments below. Because overall, I guess I'm glad the series existed uh, as opposed to not existing. But that's only because some of the moments I did with Liz I thought were so well done that it was worth it. Even though um, you know her bonding to a symbiote and now Alchemex having like a uh, an orangutan symbiote carnage anti-venom thing is escaping. 
like it's just getting too much <laughs> it's just i don't you know and seeing dr steve again and everyone like that was all fun too but um i like the alchemix crew i like you know that was brought in with mike costa's run with venom and ever since then i've been loving those characters and i want to see more of them and i did get more in here but unfortunately i had to get liz bonded to you know a symbiote and that i didn't really they didn't do a good job selling me on that concept i feel let me know again what you think down below and we'll keep talking as always down there let me know if you agree with my criticisms if you disagree if you like some things about the book i didn't mention or dislike whatever it is like i said we'll keep talking down there thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace